Hi, welcome back to What Jack Has Made. We are now entering the Netlify portion of this series, which focuses on deploying our application and building forms and functionality, which you'd expect from a traditional website. So to start off with, we first want to make sure that we've deployed our WordPress environment. Now, I'm not gonna be covering that in this series because it could well be its own series on its own. I know I've said that multiple times about other topics, but honestly, deploying a WordPress website is something that you will want to do some research into and possibly follow a different video for. I've gone ahead and deployed my website to a shared hosting environment. And as you can see, I'm using HTTPS, what Jank has made, dot app, which is my own custom domain. If we go to my browser and we go to uh, our new what Jack has made dot no face dot app, you can see we've got the same WordPress environment, except this time we're online and we're not using a local domain. Now, let me just close those. Uh, now, in order to deploy to Netlify, you'll need to have your code existing in either GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. I use GitHub at the moment for all of my repositories as they now do free private repositories. So in order to set up, you first need to create an account. And then once you've created an account, you should be presented with a screen like this, where you can access your sites that you've deployed and then go to new site from Git. You'll have to choose a Git provider. I'm gonna use GitHub for mine. And I've called my project, call it a comeback, I believe. So we'll search for call it a comeback. And we have don't call it a comeback, which is my old website and call it a comeback, which is the new one. And we can go ahead and click on call it a comeback. And it's already detected the build commands and what directory to point the uh, Netlify domain to. And you can just click deploy. And now Netlify will handle running our build commands. So if we open up the deploy log, we can watch the deploy of the website in real time. And I can kind of go over what the processes are for Netlify. Uh, effectively, what they're doing is they're looking at the package.json file and installing all the dependencies you've listed um, and creating a cache for that so that next time you run a build command, it doesn't have to process all this as much and the deploy times will be a lot quicker. As you can see, the deploy is using node version 9.9.0, which is something that I've specified in my netlify.toml file. So in my project, I've got a netlify.toml. I'm not too sure what toml stands for, but the netlify, um, configuration file allows me to specify the node version that I know will definitely work with this build and where to publish my um, site to. So when you run gatsby.build, it deploys all of your files to a public directory and the npm command to build the Gatsby website. So Netlify will go through this and if it encounters any issues, then it will sometimes fail. And so we can see we've hit an error that when we hit HTTP um, forward slash, forward slash what Jack has made test or GraphQL, it fails. And this is because I haven't actually committed the changes I've made to my Gatsby config file. So it's still looking for my local domain and failing because it's trying to access a domain it doesn't have access to. So um, fix, uh, fix deploy files. Now I know there were a couple of other files in there, but we're just gonna commit them all in one go. And you can see we've got our failed production um, deploy and that's quite unfortunate for our first deploy, but it's a good example to show you how Netlify handles failed builds. If we refresh, you can see we've already picked up on the latest commit. And this is because whenever you make a change to your GitHub repository, 
Netlify will be listening and waiting for a change. And you can see we've got the commit message, fix deploy files, and it will restart the build process and try and deploy a new website. So anytime you're creating a change to your Gatsby site and creating a commit in your Git repository, Netlify will try and build a new website for you, which is great because it stops it being a manual process and creates a completely automatic workflow. Um, if you do have a version of the site that you don't want built, you can skip that using certain prefixes and messages in your commit messages or by going into your um, site settings and disabling auto publishing. So fingers crossed we'll get the site deploying this time around. Um, while that's happening, I'll show you some other stuff that you can do. So in your deployment settings, you can configure you know, what repository you're using, where the site domain should be looking at, your deploy contexts, your hooks, which we'll be touching on in the next video, um, environment variables, which might be an issue actually for this current deployment because we want to bring in some of those. Um, and then you can have some outgoing notifications. So I'm guessing my deploy might fail again, which it did. And I'm guessing it's because I haven't got, yeah, so I've got a custom plugin, which I'll cover in a bonus video, but essentially for it to work, we need to have certain environment variables. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those into my build and deploy environment area. And I'll fast forward this. Okay, so I finally got the site deployed. There were a couple of uh, teething issues to do with our code. Um, depending on your setup, you might run into some build errors that aren't always present when you are in development. It only happens when you run Gatsby build. So that is something to be aware of. So we eventually got the build to work and you can see there were 233 new files created. Um, one new header rule and it shows the build time and total deploy time and there are no redirects or anything. So when you create a new Netlify site, you'll get a randomly generated Netlify subdomain. So I've got romantic call, I can't even pronounce that. Um, and then some random, uh, you know, numbers and letters. But when we go to the site, we should see if I turn off my dark mode plugin, we have our website that we've been creating. And because we're using a CDN, we're pulling in the images from um, the Google Cloud platform. And we now have a live website. And it's, com it's completely free to host because Netlify is a free hosting provider. Um, we can go into overview and you can see to set up our own custom domain, we can add custom domain enter in the name we want, and then we can set up the DNS settings from our domain provider. So I've already got what Jack has made set up on a different Netlify project. And once I've got, you know, once I've confirmed that the, the new website is completely working as it should be, I'll transfer the domain name over. But for now, we've deployed our Netlify site. And in the next video, we'll be covering a bit more about what we can do with Netlify in terms of creating a WordPress build hook.